Hello and welcome back to my channel. So today uh, I'm going to be discussing the development of book part two, the cap stage. Uh, in this in this lecture, I'll be only discussing the cap stage. In my next lecture, I'll be discussing the bell stage and the root formation. So uh, I have already posted the part one. If you haven't seen the part one on the bird stage, I'll link it up to on the top right corner and also in the description. So let's start. Uh, so so first of all, in the bird stage, we have the tooth bud that uh, continues to grow and proliferate while the condensation of ectomysin chyme continues. As the bird stage progresses towards the cap stage. Uh, the tooth bud continues to grow in the downward direction so when it is growing it uh, drags a part of the dental lamina along with it when it is going downward it drags a part of the dental lamina along with it and we call this part as the lateral lamina so this is just an extension of dental lamina uh, which the tooth bud makes when going downwards so as we move forward in the cap stage the tooth bud begins to resemble uh, some sort of a cap resting on a ball of ectomysin chyme. Therefore, we call this stage as the cap stage since the tooth bud is now in form of a cap. The cap is resting on a ball of cells. The ball of cells are of course the ectomysin chyme cells. So moving on in the cap stage, we start to see some sort of differentiation within the cell. So now the cap part of the tooth bud is now called as enamel organ since it will eventually give rise to your enamel. Therefore, we call this uh, as part as your enamel organ. While the ball of ectomysin chyme cells which rest uh, under this enamel organ is known as dental papilla. Uh, since it will eventually give rise to your dentine and pulp, both of them. And there are also ectomysin chyme cells around the enamel organ besides the ball of ectomysin chyme which are surrounding the enamel organ. We call them as dental follicle or dental sac. Uh, this will eventually give rise to your supporting structures of your tooth uh, like your periodontium, ligaments and uh, etc. So we call these cells as dental follicular cells. These are just an ectomysin chyme cell just like dental papilla. We name them as dental follicular cells. They surround the entire enamel organ while the cells under the enamel organ are known as dental papilla. So we have total three different group of cells. The first one is the enamel organ which will give rise to your enamel. The second one is dental papilla, uh, the ball of ectomysin chyme cells under the enamel organ which will eventually give rise to your dentine and pulp. And the third part, the dental follicle surrounding the enamel organ which will give rise to your supporting structure. So, so we have these three group of cells which will eventually give rise to your entire tooth. Together are known as your tooth germ or your dental organ since I already told that they will give rise to your uh, the entire tooth. So we call them together as tooth germ or uh, dental organ. So what happens in the cap stage is that there is somewhat differentiation of these three group of cells like I already mentioned the enamel organ, the dental papilla and the dental follicle. Uh, these three group of cells can now be identified as separate uh, group of cells. Therefore, we can now start naming them as enamel organ, dental papilla, and dental follicle. So the cells in the center of enamel organ start to secrete glycose aminoglycan. And they start to secrete this glycose aminoglycans in the extracellular compartments uh, within the each of the cells. Uh, so glycose aminoglycans being hydrophilic in nature uh, start to uh, attract water from outside the enamel organ and they start to bring water inside the center of the enamel organ. When the glycose aminoglycans start to attract the water molecules from outside the enamel organ, the cells begin to swell. So the cells now swollen with water appear to be expanded and swollen in, in nature, but they are still joined from the neighboring cells uh, by the help of cell junctions or desmosomes. So they appear to be star-like in nature because now the individual cell membrane of these cells is separate from the adjacent cell but they are still joined from the adjacent cell by help of cell junctions. Therefore, they appear to be somewhat swollen while being attached by the neighboring cell with the help of desmosomes. So the center of the enamel organs appears to be somewhat star-like in nature. We can appreciate this swollen structure in a histological slide and we call this swollen center of enamel organ as steliate reticulum. Further in the cap stage, there is another important structure which appears in the molar cap stage uh, this structure is known as enamel knot. This enamel knot is a cluster of non-dividing epithelial cells which rest on the crown of the enamel organ, the base of the enamel organ. When, now when I say that it appears in the molar cap stage, this means that when we see in the histological slide, we only see enamel knot in the molar cap stage. The reason why it appears only in the molar cap stage is because uh, basically there are two types of enamel knot. There is a primary enamel knot which is present in all of the tooth germs regardless of the tooth types, whether it be incisor or molar or any. All of them have the primary enamel knot. While the molar have an additional secondary enamel knot which is present on the cuspal tips of the molars. Therefore, in the histological slide, we can appreciate uh, the secondary enamel knot more in the molar cap stage rather than appreciating the primary enamel knot in each of the tooth germ. Just to summarize, we have two enamel knots, the primary enamel knot and the secondary enamel knot. The primary enamel knot is present in each of the tooth germ but it is not appreciable in the histological slide. While the secondary enamel knot is present on the future cuspal tips of the molars, therefore we can see this uh, secondary enamel knot in the cap stage of the molars. 
The purpose of a diamond knot is not very well understood, but since it appears on the tips of the future cusp of molars, therefore it is postulated that it must have some role in the cuspal maturation of the molars and in the cuspal formation of uh, molars. In the very late cap stage, we can now appreciate the enamel organ, the dental papilla and dental follicle as discrete and separate entities which will eventually give rise to their separate structure, one being the enamel, the enamel organ will give rise to enamel, the dental papilla will give rise to dentine and pulp and the dental follicle will give rise to supporting structures. So now they are uh, very readily identifiable and very readily distinguishable from one another. Therefore, this process is known as histodifferentiation. So as the name suggests, the histodifferentiation means that they, now they are histologically uh, identifiable and histologically differentiable. Uh, we can appreciate the differences between each group of the cells and now the cells have undergone and they are still undergoing histodifferentiation. So here are some histological slides of the cap stage for your better understanding. Uh, since previously it was just uh, animation and uh, diagrammatic representation, these are what actually uh, cap stage looks like under the histological slides. Uh, here you can appreciate the three group of cells, the enamel organ, dental papilla and dental follicular cells and also the enamel knot. Here you can clearly appreciate all of these structures. So I'll be discussing the bell stage and the root formation in my next video. So I hope you like my video. Please take care of yourselves and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.